according to St. Matthew, the sixth chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus said, Beware of practicing your piety before others in order to be seen by them, for then you have no reward from your Father in heaven. So whenever you give alms, do not sound a trumpet before you as the hypocrites do in the synagogues and in the streets, so that they may be praised by others. Truly, I tell you, they have received their reward. But when you give alms, do not let your left hand know what your right hand is doing so that your alms may be done in secret and your Father who sees in secret will reward you. And whenever you pray, do not be like the hypocrites for they love to stand and pray in the synagogues and at the street corners so that they may be seen by others. Truly, I tell you, they have received their reward. But whenever you pray, go into your secret room and shut the door and pray to your Father who is in secret, and your Father who sees in secret will reward you. And whenever you fast, do not look dismal like the hypocrites, for they disfigure their faces so to show others that they're fasting. Truly, I tell you, they've received their reward. But when you fast, put oil on your head and wash your face so that your fasting may be seen not by others, but by your Father who is in secret. And your Father who sees in secret will reward you. Do not store up for yourselves treasures on earth where moth and rust consume and where thieves break in and steal, but store up for yourselves treasures in heaven where neither moth nor rust consumes and where thieves do not break in and steal. For where your treasure is, there your heart will be also. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Please be seated. Please join me in prayer. The Lord be with you. As we begin this Lenten journey, O God, walk with us. Reveal yourself to us. But more importantly, continue to open our hearts up to you more and more to be filled with your love, your grace, your mercy, and then shape our hearts to reflect that love and mercy and grace into all that we do in this life. Help us, O Lord. This we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Sometimes I believe we come to this day with all kinds of preconditions. We come to this day after Mardi Gras, after having fun and, and making fun of having fun, with the idea, okay, now we've got to get serious and we've got to feel guilty and we've got to have shame. As though we can turn it on and off like a light switch, Okay, now's the time when Christians have to feel guilty. As though we suddenly are exposed and for a moment start to feel the weight of our own sin, our own shame, our own fault. If that is what you've come into Lent with this year, I invite you to a different approach. I invite you to dwell in being fully known. Fully known by God even before you've had an inkling of guilt or shame. This year's theme for Lent is To You All Hearts Are Open. We sang a song. We're going to be singing that a lot during Lent. 
To you all hearts are open, to you all desires known. From you no secrets are hid, almighty God. It's a beautiful 11th century prayer that we, the church, have used as a form of confession for centuries. It's an ancient prayer that captures the Scripture's understanding that God knows us, every part of us, that God knows us even better than we know ourselves. God knows our hearts. In the ancient Hebrew understanding, the heart was the center of a person's deepest level of being. It wasn't necessarily the organ, and it wasn't shaped like this, but it was the sense of the innermost part of who a person is, their essence. The heart was deeper than the mind, deeper than the emotions, and deeper than the will. The heart was the deepest level of self. And the heart was the source from which one thought, one emoted, and one acted. And God searches the heart. God knows us to the very depth of our being, which means that even before we acknowledge our own decisions, our own thoughts, or even before we admit our own sins, God knows. Imagine then the power that's expressed in the psalm that we recited a few moments ago, Psalm 51. Psalm 51 is credited to King David. Now remember who King David is. In the Hebrew understanding, David was the ideal human king. The Scripture is replete with praise for David as the ideal king. He's the one who, yeah, he slew Goliath, he led the people, but David had this other side too. You might recall there was this incident. He looks around and he sees a woman on a rooftop and he's going, ooh, she's lovely. He lusted. His lust led to action, ordering for her to be brought to him his movement of action led to what some scholars believe is outright rape. And oh, by the way, she got pregnant. And what did David do? Oh, she's married. Get her husband. Bring him home. Daggone Uriah. He kept trying to be faithful to his king. He refused to go in to be with his own wife because he was loyal to his king. Well, David didn't stop there. What's he do? Send him out to the front where there's battle, pull back. David had the guy murdered. This psalm is attributed to David after he had been confronted by Nathan. When God used Nathan to reveal that all of David's dirty human mess was known, David tried to cover up his tracks, but God knew. God knew David's heart. Already God knew the inclinations and the actions that came from the heart. God knew that David had not lived up to who he was as the chosen king. He had not lived up to the role that was entrusted to him, to the responsibility that he held. And David then comes before God appealing for God's mercy, appealing to God's very nature, steadfast love. In some ways, the psalm may sound like law when we hear in the NRSV translation, indeed, I was born steeped in wickedness, a sinner from my mother's womb. Remove my sins with hyssop. 
David already knows. God knows. David in this psalm grapples with his own knowing of his own heart, of being honest with himself, being honest with his own reality, his own false truth, and in faith then trusting to fall into God's mercy. David can no longer hide himself from his own messed up truth. But understand that God here is not standing against David, but is waiting for him to respond to grace, waiting for him to respond to that steadfast love. God is there not to condemn and push away, but rather to restore. We hear this reflected in Jesus' words when he said that I have come that you may have life and have it abundantly. David faces the deceptions of his own heart and cries out, Create in me a clean heart, O God. Give me a new beginning. Renew a right spirit within me. How about for us? God already knows our hearts. God knows us to the depth of our very being. During these days of Lent, can we dare to look at ourselves honestly, admitting where we have sinned, admitting where we have failed by things we've done or left undone? Can we dare to look at who we really are, not what we want the world to think we are, and not who we try to fool God as to who we are. Can we dare to see our honest truth and trust in God's mercy, God's very nature? You see, what happens when we reveal our own hearts, God is there to rescue us. God meets us there to restore us, to create in us new hearts, new possibilities, and new life. God moves us to singing God's praises. God opens our mouths to declare praise per the words of Psalm 51. To you, all hearts are are open is a proclamation of hope, a proclamation of gospel for us. In Jesus, we see God coming into our human mess, meeting us in our brokenness, saving us from ourselves. God already knows you, everything about you. God knows our hearts even when we've tried to hide portions, even when we've guarded portions, even when we've closed off parts of our being. And God continues to love us. During these days, dwell in the reality that your heart is already known to God. Your desires, known. Your secrets, known. And trust God who loves you still. As we journey this Lent, let us look to Jesus who meets us in our human mess with grace and see his cross as our salvation, our hope. And may we, like the psalmist David, then be moved to words of praise and thanksgiving. Amen.